group came knocking on the door of, of St. George and uh, this facility, which was missing junior hockey for a couple of years, and there was a real appetite for it. And um, Brian's group came in and, and wanted to, to make St. George home. It's called the Raven's Nest. And if you've never been to a hockey game in this building when it's full, uh, I've been fortunate to be at a couple of them. And um, it is, it's masterful. It is a lot of fun here. It's very loud. It's cold in the winter, but that's okay. Uh, we're Canadian, we can take it. Uh, some of the best ice you're gonna find anywhere. And uh, it's a great, great facility to watch a hockey game. So anyway, I met, uh, I met Brian and, and the coach uh, a little bit earlier in the year and they were talking about getting the community involved and that sort of thing. And uh, you got involved in a number of ways. Brian has brought some swag. We'll give away uh, after you've had a chance. So there's uh, some shirts here. I'm not sure who they're gonna fit in this audience. Um, <laughs> But uh, for, the, for the kids, uh, for sure. Be sure to, uh, to uh, come and get one of these shirts, however we decide to give those away. And I understand you've got some, some tickets as well. So without any further ado, uh, Brian O'Neill, the, the owner and GM of, uh, of your, not the GM, just the owner, just the owner uh, of, the, uh, of the St. George Rangers. Thank you. So St. George, you know, it's a very unique hockey town. I'll tell you a little bit about what happened. Uh, we were in Burlington for a couple of years, and that's a big city. So, you know what, part of that is a very difficult situation for tenants. You're competing with um, a lot of events going on in the city. So, you know what, it wasn't quite working out. Last year was my first year owning the team. Um, why, why did I do it? Because I love hockey. You make money out of it? Absolutely not. There is no money to be made. We don't do it to make money. Our goal is break even. If we can break even at the end of the year, financially that's success. Uh, we belong to the GMHL, which if you're not aware of the GMHL, <clears throat> there's been stories about the league. And the simple formula is we give players that are 21 years old a second opportunity. <clears throat> We're allowed to have 14 overage cards. And sometimes you know, they don't mature in hockey until that 21st year. Mm -hmm. And we try to get the professional contracts NCAA scholarships, and we've had success. Last year, we sent two players to Division II Sweden, one down to the Southern Leagues in the US. They all signed pro contracts. Now, they're not gonna get rich on the pro contracts in their first year, but if they perform well, they'll do very well in some of those countries. Um, the other thing is that we discovered that um, there's a lot of European players aren't given the opportunity to come speak to some people they say why are you bringing Europeans in because you also want to fill a roster of elite talent so if there's so much hockey going on and around the community that's an opportunity to bring Europeans in this year we have three Slovakia players <clears throat> we were over twice running the junior A camps in the springtime in Slovakia and our intent was not to bring any European players to this team and we had players coming to us they want to play for St. George for our program we're building a program. We're putting players out there to scholarships. Cortland we put two last year also. So I mean, they're recognizing what we could do for them. And the players come in, and I looked around this year and was able to look at last year's team to what we had in players, and look at this year's team. <coughs> I've never seen a group so well gel. Incredible. And they're polite. They're, um, we don't have any big egos in our dressing room whatsoever. We have an issue of probably having, I think, seven captains from previous junior A teams or junior B or C teams. And somebody has to check their hat at the door. They've been great at it. They've been great. So as far as the GMHL, it's a, it's a different view. I know I'm jumping all over, but I'm so proud of what we have in our team and organization. And <clears throat> the GMHL was started by Bob Russell, I think it was 10 years ago, recognizing there was a need to progress through hockey with 21 year olds because they don't all mature at the same time. And it was an opportunity to put teams together across Ontario that you could bring these players in because they're all over the place. Some go home, some go to college. You know, we've got players on our team from Calgary where you know they're going to school in the area, but they're from Calgary. So it's an opportunity going to university, they can also play hockey. So he recognized that situation, put together a league. Now it is 26 teams, and the, fur 
furthest south is Kingsville, which is by Windsor, and we go as far north as Temiskaming and Quebec. Now, what they've done is put it in two divisions because, I mean, the costs are too great to go to Temiskaming, obviously, but when it's playoff time and the divisions cross over, you're going to Temiskaming. Two years ago, we went to Temiskaming, the semifinals, seven game series, and it went all seven games. And it, it was really an event. You know, when you get up to Temiskaming, they're getting 4,000 people at a game. They were jammed in at the doors. At that community, that's all there is is hockey. It's a paper mill town. And they, in the sports stores, they sell the jerseys. People are buying them, they're proud to wear them. It, it's unbelievable what goes on there.